Hi, I'm Vinny Chilurzo of Russian River Brewing Company. And I'm Taylor Lane. We're here to talk about oxygen in the brewing process. Oxygen is such an important part of the brewing process. Now, most of the time we want to keep oxygen out of the process. There is one spot where you do want to have it in and we'll talk about that and many other aspects of the brewing process as it relates to oxygen. So Taylor, give me your thoughts on oxygen and why it's such an important part of the brewing process. It's incredibly important in that in the brew house, you want to add oxygen for your yeast growth. And once fermentation is kicked off, then the entire aspect of oxygen switches in that we want to minimize oxygen throughout dry hopping, our centrifugation process, and all the way into the packaging hall. Now there's gonna be a lot of stuff we talk about today that may seem like it's only relevant to the commercial brewer, but there's a lot of takeaways that the home brewer can have that I think they can really apply to their brewing process and hopefully it'll make for better technical brewing for what they end up with in their bottle or keg and what they're drinking at home. We definitely wanna make oxygen a more approachable subject, not just for the technical brewer, but also for the home brewer. Yeah. Well, good, I think on that, how about we get a little bit deeper and dive right into the subject? Yeah. You know, I think what I'd like to do is start just giving some definitions on dissolved oxygen, what we call DO, shaken dissolved oxygen, or what we call shaken DO, and then TPO, which is total packaged oxygen. And these are three terms that we're gonna bounce around throughout this video presentation class today. Dissolved oxygen is really just simply us taking a dissolved oxygen meter and connecting it to a tank that could be a fermenter or a bright beer tank, and it could even be our centrifuge, and pulling a reading through this meter and getting a reading of dissolved oxygen. Now, we always wanna be in the parts per billion. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a reading in the parts per million, there's definitely something wrong <laughs> happening in our brewing process. So dissolved oxygen, simply put, is pretty much an oxygen reading that's gonna be taken in a tank and there is one component at packaging, either in can, bottle, or keg that we're gonna be looking at. The difference between shaken DO and TPO, that shaken dissolved oxygen and total packaged oxygen, is that shaken DO is us taking a bottle or can, putting it on a shake table for five minutes, and then taking that bottle or can and connecting it to one of our dissolved oxygen meters. And that's gonna pretty much just be the reading of the beer in a shaken state and with the pressure equalized, but not the concentration. Whereas total package oxygen is the entire sum of the bottle or can. It's the oxygen level in the liquid, in the beer, and it's the headspace. And this is often confused in the brewing industry. And we will go into a deeper uh, dive and go in more depth on the difference between shake and DO and TPO when we get to the packaging part of this presentation. In order to calculate total package oxygen from shaken DO, there are a few parameters that need to be figured out first. The first of which is temperature, which is very simple. You can take it on your first package that comes off the line. It's fairly stable for a few hours. We check it every two or three hours when our line is running. You also need to get the complete volume of beer and headspace. It seems daunting at first, but it's not very difficult. You just need to know the weight of your package, empty, your total volume of the package, and from there you can calculate using specific gravity to find out the volume of the beer and the volume of the headspace. Using the shaken DO, the temperature, and the fill volume, you can then calculate TPO with fairly good accuracy. We have done a few trials of using our very expensive piece of equipment that measures TPO for us and comparing it to this calculated measurement. And we get within five parts per billion consistently. Yeah. So this is something that's very practical for someone that may not be able to afford this very expensive piece of equipment to do at their brewery. I was really surprised when we <laughs> got our hands on 
the smaller unit, the less expensive unit that also had a piercer that could connect to a proper DO meter. I was shocked, quite frankly. I didn't <laughs> think that the readings were gonna be as accurate as or as close as they can. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars of difference between these two pieces of equipment. But this was really good information for us because every once in a while, our TPO tester goes down, it needs to be serviced. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have this backup system. And so the fact that we proved this, that we compared less expensive piece of equipment, we compared those numbers with the more expensive piece of equipment, really gave us confidence to know that, you know, not only could we rely on the more expensive piece of equipment, but, you know, in a pinch, we can fall back on the less expensive setup that more breweries have. And quite honestly, the difference between doing a calculated TPO using a shaken dissolved oxygen number really comes down to laziness. And I know that's being very direct, <laughs> but it, it's not that hard. And yes, there can be a little bit of wiggle room and margin of error when you're trying to weigh the can with the liquid in it to try to come up with the right weight of the liquid, mm -hmm. which as Taylor said, you need that number, but with a decent scale that really isn't that expensive, yeah. you really can be quite accurate with this number. And, and, you know, I mentioned earlier that it's one of the most confused terms <laughs> in the industry, the difference between shake and DO, DO and TPO. And I hear brewers all the time talk about their DO numbers. And for me, I would love to see the industry get a little more focused and have a little tighter parameters on how they use these phrases. And if you're talking about DO, what you mean is dissolved oxygen in your tank. When you, if you are talking about your bottles or cans, you're not necessarily taking a TPO reading because maybe you don't have the calculation done yet. You say shake and DO, but if you're actually running the calculation or you have a TPO tester, you use the term total package oxygen. It's important to note from that as well that most of the time, shake and DO will be less than total package oxygen. So the shake and DO is a more impressive number because it's lower, but there's more to it. And the reason why that is, is because when you take a bottle or a can and you put it on the shake table, or as some small breweries do, they'll get a paint mixer <laughs> and they'll put the can in there and use that to shake it. You're equalizing the pressure between the headspace and the beer, but you're not equalizing the concentration of oxygen between the liquid and the headspace. You've taken the can or bottle and you've shaken it for five minutes and then you take the shaken DO reading, that is not giving you an accurate total package oxygen number. Again, because You've only equalized the pressure, but not the concentration of oxygen between the liquid and the headspace. And that's why taking that information and putting it into a spreadsheet calculator and calculating out TPO is so important as a commercial brewer. Now, as a home brewer, you obviously don't have access to this equipment. And so you will obviously have to rely a lot on just really good practices and a lot of those practices will come from purging your vessels, whether you're moving beer from one tank to the other, carboy to the other, whatnot. And also when you get to kegging your beer, purging your keg properly. If you're bottling or canning your beer, make sure that your cans or bottles are purged properly. I can't emphasize enough how important that is. As I said before, total package oxygen can be calculated from shake and DO. In order to calculate your total package oxygen, you need to know the fill volume of your beer as well as the headspace. If you're going to assume that all of your cans or bottles are high fills, which is very common, you're going to consistently get lower numbers for calculated TPO with that shake and DO number. If alternatively, you know that your bottle or can line is consistently low fills, that's gonna give you inconsistent high numbers. It's such a simple measurement of getting the temperature and your weight. You can just create an Excel calculator, which is what we did. And it gives you very accurate measurements of the calculated TPO every time.